Zaman Rowe, what's going on, brother? Brother Brian, you doing well? Man, it's been a it's been a great week, dude. And I I've, I'm sitting outside tonight. Uh, the sun You're keeps playing tricks me. on me, so I'm probably gonna move around all night tonight. But I thought it'd be a good idea just to sit in the swamp. It's a beautiful day. It feels it feels wonderful out here, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to sit outside to hang out with you. It's almost like you're here. I know it, it. It this is the time of year, and I'm looking across the street from my office. There's the world's most beautiful azalea bank over there. Uh, Got to get outdoors. I'll try and be outdoors maybe next week. Hey, but uh, uh, it's been. You had a good week. I've had a man. It's been a it's been a great week since we met last. It's been a busy week. I did get to do a little bit of fishing over the weekend, which was great. We'll talk about that maybe next week. We got a yeah. full lineup tonight, I know, uh, and hoping that uh, this weekend we'll be doing the same thing. I will be uh, fishing in the mountains uh, this weekend. Maybe we'll both bring some video. Uh, but I, if it's all right with you, I'll go on and and talk about Allison and and our show this week. Um, We've got Allison Blanchard coming from uh, Clear Lake, Wisconsin. That's when you buy butter in the grocery store and it says Lando Lakes, but that's her town, a town of a thousand people in Wisconsin. And her story, Brian, you're going to like this lady. She's incredible. I'm, I am excited. I know enough about her to, to know that I was really looking forward to this, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to hearing her story. Uh, anytime you see that, that somebody faced adversity and was able to overcome it and make, make the right decisions and then have the right results, right? You do the right thing, you get the right result. And from what I understand, that is, that is absolutely her story. And the other thing I understand, Zan, uh, is that she lives in a county. You're right that the Land Lakes, which is now what AFB or whatever, Butter, uh, is there in, in Clear Lake. But in her county, uh, just based on a little bit of research I did, there's 432 lakes there. And it actually said, when you, when you go into to Wikipedia and you're looking this up, it said, uh, 432 lakes that need to be fished by the gator and the trout man. Yep. So I think that, that if this goes well, we're going to have to figure out a way to convince her to let us go up there and do a little hunting and fishing. I, I think, uh, I think they live on a 180 acre farm. And I think that, uh, if we can make our way into that area, I can almost guarantee you that, that we could do some fishing and hunting. And that, would, that would be a go. blast. That and would then we could do a show live from up there. Hey, live from Wisconsin? That would be wow. great. That would wow. be great. Well, let's go see Allison Blanchard because she will. It, folks, if you're going to watch any one of our shows, you better watch this one because she's going to tell you how to become successful. Looking forward to it. See you in a minute. So, uh, Allison, I thought about introducing you, but I, here's what I really want to do. I want you to tell us your story, and I want you to start when you and I met in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. You were working as a real estate agent there, and bring us to, to uh, tell us your life story. This is one of Brian's favorite things to ask people. Tell us your story. Just you, you tell us. Okay. Well, when you met me, um, I don't think I could have been poorer uh, at the time. I had five kids. They were at that time three, four, seven, nine, and 11, or thereabouts. And we were probably, I was definitely not a homeowner. So I was like a, you know, marriage counselor who wasn't married. I was a realtor who had never bought a home and probably three months behind on rent, couldn't pay for anything. My van was breaking down and I was working or starting to work in a gated community where people were buying their second and third homes cash. And I'm showing up undressed, unprepared in a van that's falling apart. And that's when you met me. <laughs> I was lucky enough to be uh, under the broker, number one broker in the state of Mississippi. Carlene and Alfonso. Let's, Carlene let's give Alfonso. Carlene Alfonso credit. She is a magnificent lady. Trust no, me. Everyone when was, when was this? What year, what year was this? 
2000, probably 13. Yeah. 13 or 14. So about yeah. seven years ago, really, seven, eight years ago. Ugh, just thinking about it. Oof. That's no, rough. Just, it, it, that's not that long. Okay. Um, and Carlene, ironically, is the same exact height as I am. We're both about six foot tall and we kind of emulate each other that way. We're both tall, dark hair. People think I'm scary. I thought she was scary. But she had clothes and, you know, they were just in her closet and never going to be worn. So did I want them? Um, she had such a good way about doing that. So she would help me when she didn't need to. And she asked me if I wanted to go to this program that she had um, and was bringing Zan in. And she set it up to where I was going to be paying her back after I closed properties. Also didn't have to do that. But I went to Zan and his program. And at the time, what was it called, Zan? Uh, I'm not sure which class it was, but it was probably a ninja class. Or I think it was ninja. I mean, class. everyone knows me as a ninja, and I have so many yeah. coffee cups now. You'd be so proud. Oh, yeah. uh, but I went to your class, and at that point, I was, you know, happy to make 600 bucks. And I, I went on then and had my first closing of 1200 started implementing the program. I, and looking back, my first closing, I, I don't, I think I was probably close to tears. I was so excited. But it, it was really hard for me because I was trying to make it work with a bunch of little kiddos. My husband at that time was the primary um, moneymaker for the family. So if the kids needed something, that was my job. And we were just so far behind. I was trying to make things work. And really my parents paid for my classes for real estate and I didn't want them to worry. So I said, you know, I'm okay. I just, I just don't have enough to pay for the extra for the classes. So could you do that? And they did. Well, things before they got better started getting worse. And all those bills that had kind of piled up were becoming things that we couldn't ignore, but didn't have the money to pay for them. So um, my husband said, man, we're going to have to do something I don't want to make you do. And I said, what? And he said, we're going to have to pawn our wedding rings. I said, no, poor people pawn things. That's, that's not me. Because I grew up on a dairy farm in northwestern Wisconsin. We had everything we needed. Not a lot of extra, but everything we needed. That is just not something I was capable of thinking we were going to do. Fast forward to the next morning and we were at the pawn shop. So there was major amounts of guilt with that I, and shame because that was not where I thought we were ever going to be. And that was, I, I'm guessing in about 2014 uh, when all this is going on. Well, I started doing a little bit better in real estate and I was quickly becoming some of the top 10% in the area, which was pretty good considering we had a large amount of agents in our area. And in that market, we carried uh, on our MLS probably somewhere between 80 and 112 listings at all times. And that's just a rough guesstimate. So, and at that time also, when I started, the average time on Excuse the market me. was five and a half. I I want you to remember what you just said. I am so embarrassed. I left my bad, my laptop charger inside. Everything's oh, getting ready fine. to die, and I am so I am so sorry. I was really no, getting into fine. this, and all of a sudden I see warning, warning. I, I am sorry. I'll be right Run. back. Hey, you you can go. We'll be here when you get back. Thank you. We can keep going that. with the story. He just doesn't want to miss anything. No, you're fine. And you know what's really funny? Can can we just keep talking? So we were averaging, you know, 100 and some listings. And the average time on the market was five and a half months. Wow. For a listing when I started. And I remember Carlene and I having a conversation. She said, well, if you want to start real estate now, if you can make it now, you can make it at any point. Because, yeah. you know, now our average is like 27 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, an hour or two. And I just told you, I mean, we have one listing that's currently on our market here, and it's mine. I just put it on this morning. 
and it'll we already have showings and it'll be sold before you know it oh yeah yeah um it's um so so that transition from the class to moving up to a top agent i will say knowing your history you did what i taught you actually implemented it into your business well and that's where i i tell even my agents now it's like a weight loss program there's four million of them but you have to find one that makes sense fits your style of learning fits your style of who you are and your program is at the core exactly what i am at my core it's about your people it's about your clients and it's about customer service not about making a sale so implementing all of those things is important because they go hand in hand with how how we do business and how we live our life it's not just something you implement and then are like like i said just like a weight loss program you can't say i'm gonna lose weight but only kind of only when it's convenient you have to be that way the whole time it has to become a lifestyle and that's that's what you teach and that's what we did um do you want me to wait or keep going oh no keep rock and roll <laughs> well do you want me to keep going with the story part oh yeah we left ryan out completely uh, look, look I'm, okay. I, I apologize i actually could hear the whole thing that's the beauty of it. Oh, okay. I could hear what you were saying uh and you just used the analogy of weight loss and i look at it too i like i love i love food and i love to cook but it's a recipe it's a recipe for how to get where you're at today to get to the next level. It's been done. It's been proven. And if you follow those steps and, and those ingredients, uh, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to work, right? It's going to work. So I was, uh, uh, I, 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 you pawned your wedding rings. Yeah. The next morning. And, and mm. that's amazing to me. Well, like I said, it's just not something, I mean, there aren't, I don't even know if there's pawn stores around where we live. There's not even stoplights here, let alone pawn stores or whatever you call them. So I, at that, that point, I decided I'm not going to live like life like this. This is not my life. This is just a time period and it's not going to define me because this is definitely not who I am and who I want to be. So I put my nose to the ground and I ran those programs and the things that we talk about was in to a T and, you know, having Carlene behind me was huge because she was my biggest fan and, you know, she obviously knew what she was doing. I think she's up to something like seven offices and 350 agents. She just bought a whole new company this year. <sighs> Oh, of course she did. <laughs> and if you could say something to Carlene, I'm going to send her this recording. So oh. just tell her. I can't. I'll get all teary eyed. <laughs> you can call her. I will. She, no, she never had to do anything that she did. But I would like to think she saw something in me that was that fight that I'm not giving up. I've got too much grit. And that would be the, the growing up playing four different sports. I played on the boys' soccer team. I played, I was in track. I played basketball and volleyball. So, you know, those life lessons. And, and I coach basketball at the high school level here now because I know how important those things are now that I'm older, of course. You never, you never really get it until later, I think, for the most part. And that's... That's the same with this time period of my life. I don't realize how important it was because everything Carlene did, I watched. Everything she said, I absorbed. Everything, every decision she made, I was paying attention to. And about, you know, a, a lot of stuff happened uh, in between the next couple of years, but it was a major struggle because I was digging out of a $80,000 hole with five kids, you know, two of which are very young. And we, uh, when we pawned the rings, that's when my life changed because I said no more and just went after it. And about a year and a half after that, Carlene asked me to go to another 
um, conference and it was in Washington, DC. I had never been there and neither had my husband. And I said, you know, instead of flying this time, do you mind if I drive and bring Ben? I'm going to have a hotel anyhow. Cause I always kind of did things with her and went to the classes she told me to go to when we got there. I said, Ben will go do the, the tourist thing. And I have a cousin that lives there so they can hang out and I'll go to all the classes. She said, sure. So we drove that night and it was the early part of February. So just before Valentine's, we don't celebrate a whole lot, but nonetheless, that's the time period it was. And we got to the hotel that night and my husband said, you know, it's, it's been a year and a half since all of that. And he said, can I give you your Valentine's day present early? And I said, sure. I mean, I didn't get you anything. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I'll take one. And he was in the back of the hotel room and I was just sitting there and he come out and he said, I got you something. And he opened up his hands and in it was a ring box with my wedding ring. See, it still gets me. So you're getting me here. (laughs) He had went back then later that day and said, look, I got to be able to buy that back. Please don't sell it. I'll do anything. And all that we could do was $5 a week. And that's it. So it's, you said it, Brian, it's only been seven years. That's insane. And what's insane is now I I get to do whatever I want. I just took my kids to Belize. That's awesome. um, And we were there for seven days. Sorry, I'm a little teary eyed. It's just because it's so happy. I'm sitting here thinking these bugs are all in my eyes right now. I don't know. Yeah, well, me too. (laughs) I blame Dan for making me tell it because not many people know the story. But um, because of the hard work, and the ability, I have it still on my computer. I've had it with me for over seven years. The ability to discipline yourself to delay gratification in the short term in order to enjoy greater rewards in the long term is the indispensable prerequisite for success. Ooh, that's got to go in the book. I love that. And I have lived that when things were so hard, like I said, there was nobody wants to be in that position and and no time did I ever think that was going to be me, but there it was. And I had to figure it out. So we did. And now dust off. Now I I, built a big business in, in Biloxi area. Yeah. Yep. I was, I would say if I remember correctly, I was probably in the top 5% there. Wow. of real estate agents selling yeah. houses and then you just pulled up roots and went back to Wisconsin. I did. It got to a point where the lifestyle there just wasn't um, what we were looking for, for our kids raising five little ones. We wanted to get back to the country. Um, there we lived in a gorgeous uh, retirement. Well, it was a retirement slash resort community and we loved it there. I had amazing friends and family, but we wanted to get back to the acreage, back to the farm. My daughter, um, as soon as we moved back, we had, you know, we have 300 chickens we butcher every year. We have 20 laying hens. We have pigs. We have beef. We do all that and have a acre and a half garden. So they learn a different type of work. They learn a different type of discipline. And we're in a town where it don't matter what they do. I'm going to find out about it before they even get home because someone's going to call. (laughs) That's the way Brian and I grew up. I started to say, we know that feeling. I know that one. When daddy's waiting at the door, I knew I was in trouble. Right. And so, you know, the guy that owns the grocery store, we know he'll call me. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody knows everybody. And like, just for some comparison i graduated with 37 people and three of them were exchange students so we have a very small town and everybody kind of watches out for everybody so it's just like we have an exact replica of andy griffith here and it it fits perfectly 
So, I love it. Love it. It's actually a bed and breakfast. It's the only place you can stay within 30 miles. So if <laughs> you ever come, that's where you have to stay. It's the only option. But you, you left, I mean, in real estate, you build a business, but it's, it's a loca located business. In other words, Biloxi, you came base, yeah. out of debt, you, you paid off your bills, you got a house, and then y'all, you started all over again when you moved back to Wisconsin. It was a really hard decision to make because I was doing so well there. But what it boiled down to is I had been saying after we were in that hole, if I just do well in real estate, I'll be happy. If I can just get out of this hole, I'll be happy. But what it, what it finally boiled down to is we needed to be by family. Yeah. What, you know, I was just missing home. Um, it's the only place I've ever lived my whole life. My dad has literally lived in the same house his entire life. He grew up there. My grandparents moved a house next door. My mom and him got married and she moved into the house and they are still in that house. Oh, wow. <laughs> And, and, and now, you rebuilt your own, you rebuilt your business in, in Wisconsin in a town of a thousand people. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to be possible. Um, I honestly thought I would have to take an extreme pay cut um, because I was coming from a market that was quite huge. It was a retirement resort community. People would walk in and say, I have three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars cash. I'm here for the weekend. Can you help me find something? Maybe. Maybe. You know, so you go from that to a farming community of a thousand people and surrounding towns that have similar populations. And I didn't think it it was gonna be the same. What I found out when I moved here was it was significantly better and our business has grown exponentially over the past couple of years. And now you own your own real estate company. Yep. I had um, started with one and then helped start a, a company with one other person. And we did that for about a year and a half. And I decided that it's real hard to make your vision your vision when there's other people involved. So they're great and they're doing fine, but we decided last July to start our own. And I wanted to make sure that no matter what happens in business or life, that we always stay the course and always put our customers first and do what's right all the time, every time. And the only way, in my opinion, to stay the course when you're out in the middle of nowhere is to have a compass. Wow. I love that. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. Well, here, her company name is Compass Realty. Oh, I know. That's why I said I love it. It was because I knew that. I'm sorry. We may not have told folks that. But <laughs> when you told me this, I mean, I think that, that's, that's great how you led into that. He, I got, I've, got a, I've got a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Go for it. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you, you shared uh, – some intimate things with us that, that Zan may have known, but you don't know me, that, that you did not have to. And I, I appreciate that. Uh, it's always interesting to me to see what, I'll call it what makes people tick, but what their driver is, right? Yep. You made a comment that said, uh, when you put, when you had to pawn your rings, you, it was like a, a, a switch flip and you said, no more. No more. That right. was the tipping point, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you, the the actions and what you implemented, in spite of the fact that you did not have results the next day. I guarantee you. I mean, I may be wrong, but I guarantee you that that what you're doing today, you're laying that foundation, and it's going to come right with anything. But yep. tell me a little bit on on that one. Then I've got a follow up question for you on that. Once you made that decision and you began doing the activities, things don't manifest on your desk. You have to do those activities to get to the small daily activities, no matter how grueling it is to get to that end result. Tell me if you would about that battle, because I, I would imagine that there were days you thought, oh, dear God, this is, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh, uh 
there's still days I am like, you know what, I just need to go find a nine to five and that'll be easier because the stresses that come along with anything can be overwhelming. And to answer that question, I'm going to tell you something else that will make you probably have more questions. But in our area, because it's so small, there are not a lot of business women that are running companies. So going back to that time period, now put, put a pin in that and we'll come back to that. So going back to the time period when I, there were times I had $5 left to my name and I knew my kid had to get somewhere the next morning, but I had to go to a showing tonight and the stupid van gauge said 17 miles to E and my showing was 10 miles away. Well, that doesn't work. I had to make some extreme changes and choices. I became almost, I don't want to say obsessed, but so driven in what my goals were that it didn't matter what came up. I was going to find a solution. There was just no way around it. Uh, and I'm sorry. I, I'm, and I told you I would do this. I am sorry. You're fine. There's a guy uh, that's actually from Louisiana. I think he lives in Florida now. His name is Grant Cardone. And I love reading Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone has a book called Be Obsessed or Be Average. So when you said just a second ago, hey, I, I hate to say the word obsessed. I'm saying to you, say the word obsessed. Because it takes that type of obsession to, and when your back's against the wall, the way that it was, you have no choice to be obsessed. And the truth of the matter is when your back's not against the wall, you still have to have that same type of obsession to hit the next level. So I'm, I am loving the fact that you did not quit. No matter what was against you, you didn't. It was, it was rough. And there were, I mean, and there were other major things going on in the background at one point, at one point, my brother and my dad were diagnosed with cancer. Mm. My brother had skin cancer and was given a 50% chance of living. And he at the time was 31, I believe, and had three young boys. And then my dad was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer and told he may not make it either. And I'm in Mississippi. So it was rough. And I try to be semi or pretty honest without, you know, oversharing and be that, that weird person who just told you their life story. But everyone's like, oh, you know, she's got it easy. But they didn't see the first 10 years when we had a lot of things going on, even back to when I was younger. You don't need to know this, but it's why I am who I am today. In fifth grade, my classmate shot himself and I was with him minutes before it happened. And I missed it. So little things like that, well, they're huge things, mm -hmm. happened throughout my life that created an, 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 I don't know, a huge urge and need to just live every day obnoxiously. And if you have ever met anyone that knows me around here, they will tell you it's really quite ridiculous because I'll come dancing into the office or they'll see me out on the street dancing or doing something ridiculous. I want to get a skateboard so I can ride that around town. But that's why when you have nothing or when you have major things like that, you can choose to let them bring you down and become a victim, or you can use that as a mindset to say, no, the good Lord put me here and I'm going to do amazing things. I and absolutely love what you just said though. I, I couldn't choice. repeat it if you asked. <laughs> you made a choice. And so many times people want to be the victim. And, and listen, let me tell you something. And I, I'm sorry that the things happen in your life. I can share stories of, of, that, of struggle in mine. I'm sure that Zan can share struggles of, of his. If somebody says to you, Allison the Ninja, life is, is easy and a breeze, they're lying to you. I don't care who you are, the greatest and most successful people that I know today, and I know a lot, 
they had they had they had struggles, right? So I, I love the fact that you made a choice. Now I got a follow up question for you. I've heard the name Carlene a couple of times, and if you send this to her, Zan, hey Carlene. So here's here's my question for you. <laughs> if you send this to her, hey, Carlene, and, and I'll, before you ask, Carlene Alfonso saw in her exactly what Carlene is. You two are identical. But, but here's, here's my That's probably my, one of the best compliments I've ever had, so thank yeah, you. I, I can I'll just tell it. you, having known both of these women, y'all are identical. Well, just, here's my, but here's my question for you. I had people in my life that did not have to, one of them's on the screen with us, did not have to, but invested in me, right? Don't know why, but they did. Yep. As a result of that, I believe fully that um, there's a great responsibility that we have to identify and invest in others. And so that's just a personal belief. And I, I'm just curious, have, do you find yourself seeing somebody who was where you were seven to 10 years ago and have you began taking people under your wing? Do you find yourself doing that or, or I'm just curious about that. Can I answer? <laughs> Yeah, she not only owns a real estate company, she owns every building company and Compass Clothing Company, a company that sells t-shirts and provides coaching for women entrepreneurs who are moms, Christians in today's crazy world. Tell him about your return from Belize and what you did the day of your plane landing at noon. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'll change your times just a little bit, but we have decided, and that's where I said, put a pin in it. I struggled so much because just running a business, I could do that. But wanting to run a business and then grow it and have it become something much more is not something that happens a lot in this area. Now, there are plenty of amazing women who are doing amazing things, but I couldn't find them or I was looking in the wrong places. So people like Zan, he's a phenomenal go-to for me. Like, like you said, Brian, he never has to do what he does for me, but he'll call and that's the, that means the world to me when he checks in. Because I can say, Zan Monroe called me and people are like, who's Zan Monroe? There are two people that almost everyone in Clear Lake probably knows that they don't know. Carlene Alfonso and Zan Monroe. <laughs> so if you come walking in and say, I'm Zan Monroe, they'll probably be like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I know you, but I don't. my children. <laughs> rise, my children. But because of that struggle, I decided, you know what? We can really shrink time frames for people by being there and helping them so they don't have to do the trial and error like I had to. And now like Zan, I have a mentor here um, that I had worked with. Um, I hired a coach that was also a male out of Washington. All amazing people, but still not women who are moms and, and entrepreneurs and trying to make that all fit together. Not that they weren't amazing, but it's just a little bit different. So with another friend of mine, we started uh, what's called Compass Clothing Company. And I will read if you're okay with that. I'm pulling up my phone so I can read the Facebook page. Oh, did that oh, come yeah. up? Okay. Oh, you're good. Um, let me get to it real fast. How do you find the about? I don't know. <laughs> it's in the info. I want to read it because it says it so much better than I do. Okay. It says, our, our goal is for women who are entrepreneurs and women of faith to embrace their authentic purpose. We provide a network that will support and grow with you. We choose to build women up and we choose to create a culture that cheers for each other all day, every day. We are a resource for women who are doing it all, barely holding it together, and still strive to stay the course. Our goal is to inspire 10,000 women this year. Thank you so much for being one of the 10,000. 
Absolutely. And we, so we do that by selling t-shirts and there's four of them. And we also hold mastermind groups for business women in the area. And what Zan was referring to is we had our quarterly meeting. Well, it's not a meeting. It's a gathering where we can brainstorm and mastermind and, and push our businesses and ourselves forward. And it started at 12 on Wednesday. I was to get home from Belize Tuesday night. And I got notified from my airline company, which I won't name, that they're canceling our flight and I wasn't going to get home till Wednesday at two. I said, well, that's not going to work. I've got women coming to my office and I'm the speaker, so I need to be there. So they got me on a flight five o'clock the next morning from Houston, which took me to Chicago, which then took me to Minneapolis, which is an hour and 10 minutes from home. And I walked in my office at 11.58 for our 12 o'clock meeting. (laughs) So yes, I do. If you knew my mom, you know why that story took so long. But (laughs) I I do find myself giving back because of people like Carlene. She didn't need to do a darn thing she did for me. And it's, I I feel like it too is my absolute duty and honor to help other women get to where they want to be. I figure if I help them, I help their families. So, and that's that many families that can now have a better life and a better family life because of what we're helping them do. Zan said to me, you're really going to enjoy meeting her. I said, but he's also introduced me to some other folks. I'm like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Dan's never led me astray, right? So he said, you're really going to enjoy meeting her. Um, actually, a lot more than I was anticipating. I've enjoyed uh-huh. this. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, number one, again, you have no idea how much I appreciate, we appreciate you being here, number one. Number two, my mind is going a thousand miles an hour right now. And if you would, when we get finished with the segment, I want you to stay on. Cause I got a couple. Okay. I've got some folks I want you to reach out to. Number three, I love it when people have an impact. Okay. In their, in their world and beyond. Uh, and you, my friend uh, have a major, you've had an impact on me today. And I, I just, I cannot begin to tell you, how much I've enjoyed this. And then my last question, which is, is almost as important is uh, I really would really sincerely uh, love for your husband to call me and say, <laughs> Brian, Zan can come if he wants to, but I got a 180 acre farm here in Wisconsin that somebody needs to come hunt with me. And I can tell you that um, I can get to Wisconsin. So yep. I, I really appreciate I've, I have enjoyed this more than uh, than you can imagine. And I, I, oh. I mean that sincerely. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I feel like the biggest thing we can do as business women, and I'm sorry that you're not one, but it can be very tough and we have to kind of put this facade on that we're tough and strong. And for a long time, I wore that same armor. And then I realized that when I chose to finally be vulnerable, other women could see that it's okay that it's rough. It's okay that it's hard. It's okay that you feel like quitting. It's okay that you don't think you can do it, but you have to keep going and you can do it. And when we become vulnerable vulnerable enough to allow them to hear that, it's much more impactful for them than saying, you can do it. Well, yeah, but there is a lot of rough days in the middle. I, there's, there's, there's a lot of people that are going to hear your message this week and beyond uh, that are going to be truly inspired. Zan always says the word inspires over his head means to breathe life into. I promise you there are people that you're breathing life into their thought process. You're believing... There are people right now, there are people right now, I promise you, that are saying, I'm going to have to hike my wedding ring. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're sitting there with a the compass behind you saying, listen, I've got the direction for you to follow. 
You just got to, you got to be willing to do what nobody else is willing to do. And I, I can tell you, it's very inspiring to me. I appreciate, I appreciate again, more than you realize you being here. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Zan, any thoughts? I, I appreciate you. I knew too. you'd enjoy her. Every time I, I, talk I love about, you know, she says that she inspires me. Heck, I go home and tell, tell my wife, I got to talk to Allison this summer or today, and it was this and it was that. And, you know, she loves to hear those stories. No, uh, Allison, you are the show this week. And, and um, uh, you have given so many fabulous principles. I'm looking back at my notes. I want your quote, the ability to discipline yourself and delay gratification. I want to get that from you. Um, I stole it from a book at some point, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, but sure. If I, I mean, Zan always told like me R&D is, is rip off what? and duplicate. Zan always told me that R&D is not research and development. It's rip off and duplicate. Right, <laughs> right. And, and, at, and she would call me along the way. I'm leaving Mississippi. I'm headed back to Clear Lake. I, and then we, we um, worked with her company some and talked to her agents and tried to teach it's well the especially in real estate or you know even mortgage or whatever the company is in this realm of our our world that we live in nothing is quick gratification you have to plant seeds and it's up to the good lord in the sunshine when those stinkers are gonna grow and and bloom so you can bet your bottom dollar i'm out there like a little farmer ninja planting seeds all day every day like <laughs> If I plant more, it's going to be good. So you just, at the end of the day, you have to be able to go and be grateful for whatever happens. And I've had some bad days, so you can't say my life has been tra-la-la, happy and sunflowers and sunshine. But if you can find a way to be grateful every day, then the rest of it's just going to fall into place. That's, that's, that's the quote. Find a way to be grateful every day. Grateful every Everything day. Everything else will fall in place. It all starts with with the gratitude. I've, uh, Zan, I'm, I'm, I think we're going to need to get her back sometime. Oh yeah, and, and maybe actually, I, think, I think I think what may be the right thing to do here. And, I, and I'm just I'm just throwing. Are it you out. just you're, are you getting a seed growing? I feel uh, like I'm, plan, I'm, <laughs> I'm planting a seed. Uh, my understanding in the county that she lives in, there's 432 lakes, and 430 of them have fish. Yeah. So maybe what we ought to do is go fish some of these lakes and just do a, a live interview on the farm. On the farm. Show us yeah. how to plant seed and we can fish the lakes in Wisconsin. I mean, I'm That's just it. thinking out loud. We take the show on the road. <laughs> I mean, we just take the show on the road. That's all there is to it. The road it's show fun. with. That would be fun. Trout Gator man and the Trout Man. Gator and the Trout Man. <laughs> so. Um, Allison, again, good to see you. If you would stay on after this segment, I got a couple things I want to talk to you about. Okay. And uh, I hope we get to see you again soon. Absolutely. Same. Likewise. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Brian. Oh, my God. Did I tell you you'd like Allison or what? Dude, you didn't lie to me. You didn't lie to me. You know, and let me just say this. As soon as she got off, the sun was in my eyes. I had to move over a second. But I wanted to go through a couple of things with her. Her story is absolutely phenomenal, Zan. Uh, you know, when you look at somebody who had to pawn her wedding rings, but let me tell you the beauty of that story. This is, and look, I'm not an emotional guy, but I, it had me having a little misty out there. She had five kids, doesn't know how to make the, the, the next, where the next penny's going to come from. They pawned their wedding rings, and then when she shared, five dollars a week a year and a half later they're in new york or washington dc and her husband i mean uh, was able to give the ring back to her i thought what an incredible story and what i loved about that point was the tipping point everybody has a tipping point right and she knew right then i got to be willing to do and so i got to be willing to do what nobody else is willing to do right so I, I was really uh, i was impressed by her and when you hear somebody sharing with the passion that she shared, what I heard her saying is, you can do anything that you want to do if you put your mind to it. Yeah. And life 
she even said later when we're talking off screen, I mean, off, off video, I don't know if you remember this. Uh, she didn't realize everybody was still, the kids were smiling. The kids were happy. They didn't know any different. But there was that realization with her that, that this is not how life is supposed to be. Yeah. yeah it, and how quickly she has recovered, or not recovered is not the right word, how she has made a whole new life has really only been seven, eight years. It's amazing. Um, amazing. When you're in it, you think it's taking forever, but the truth is you can change your life. And you're exactly right. I think that's, that's our message this week. I mean, I'm going back through her notes um, to go from, from, from barely, you know, being way in debt to now owning three different companies and, and, and doing what basically, like she said, whatever she wants, um, inspiring others. She kept saying, people invest in other people. Carlene Alfonso, who's a mutual friend of Allison and mine uh, down in Biloxi, the same type person. I mean, Carlene invested in, in Allison. Allison is now investing in others. So yeah, if, if we've said it before, but I'll say it again. If you didn't get it this time, if you watched this show and didn't understand the message here is you can achieve anything in life, then, you know, it's can't your help fault. You. It's your fault, right? It's I mean, your it's your fault. fault. I mean, uh, you think about, listen, you think Paul Norris, Brian Smith, Chris Baines, Allison Blanchard. Uh, yep. Every one of these folks has a story and that message that the, the, it's an identical message every week, just in a different language. It's an just identical a message line. in a different language. So what a, uh, what a great opportunity. And, and Hey, kudos for you. That's kind of, uh, you always talk about your goal of, of inspiration, the amount of people that you want to be able to inspire. You talk about, uh, or I've been a part of, of some of the coaching programs that you've done, but to see someone who said, I sit in one of your classes and realize I can do this. That's got to make you smile. Oh, yeah. brother. It gives me goosebumps just to hear it again, because as a teacher, as a speaker or book writer, author, consultant, or whatever you do, you never really know how much you've affected another human. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody listening needs to understand that too. Every day, all day, you're affecting the world around you. Are you affecting it in a positive way or a negative way? Yeah. And, and years later, people will come back to you and say, this is what you said, and it changed my life. And, and that's the greatest honor. As she said, and we've said, you invest in other people. And, and that investment, I think you said this, your outgo is more important than your income. What you put out to the universe is way better than what comes back. Brian, Every week it gets better. Next week we got a good friend, uh, Mark Given. Oh, has Mark! I haven't seen Mark in a long time. Mark's a good guy. I'm looking forward to that. Yep. He's written like nine books. Yeah. And he he sends them to my wife so she can read them in bed to me at night. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like we got to help you. We got to help him. That's awesome. That's awesome. You got big plans this week or? Uh, this week, my son and I are going to the mountains for his birthday today, actually filming. I that saw that. Birthday. I actually sent him a note this morning. Tell him happy birthday. Oh, good. So when your 27 year old son calls and says, dad, for my birthday, I want to go to the mountains with you and I want to play golf and I want to fly fish. I went outside and cranked up the car. That's right. That is awesome. I, I hope that you guys have a, have a great week. And, uh, Zan, the weeks were flying by, but I look forward to seeing you next week, brother. We'll do it, and I'll have golfing and fishing video for you next week. All good. All right, brother. See you.